This is a hand-cranked axial flux alternator rectified to produce about 12 to 16 volts of direct current electricity. The following presentation is about its design and build. The essential components are 20 neodymium magnets and 15 coils of 18 gauge magnet wire. The magnets and magnet wire are available online. The magnets should be as strong as possible and be axially magnetized so the north and south poles are easily situated on the rotor. These magnets have dual countersunk holes and thereby accommodate the alternating polarity requirement as well as the machine screws that attach each magnet to the rotor. The coils must be manually wound using a coil winder. 18 gauge wire was selected for this project, but heavier or lighter gauge is also possible and results in different voltage and current output of a finished alternator. The coil winder is hand built and an essential part of the project. Each coil must be tightly wound in the same direction as every other coil. Attempting to do so without a coil winder is a waste of time and resources. A well-constructed coil winder saves time and effort. Each coil is wound so that its hollow center fits the length and height dimensions of a single magnet. This dimension enables the magnet's flux lines to efficiently induce the most current from any single coil when passing in close proximity. A coil's thickness is generally the same as a magnet's thickness, but can be a bit thicker if using powerful magnets. Since this is a three-phase alternator, every three coils are associated with four magnets. This ratio of three coils for every four magnets is an essential part of the alternator. Since 20 magnets are used, 15 coils must be wound. The stator's dimensions were determined after all 15 coils were wound and situated in a circle. The stator's plans were drawn in Adobe Illustrator. The stator is where the coils are attached with zip ties. It is stationary while operating the alternator. The finished piece is one half inch thick, custom cut aluminum. The rotor's dimensions were determined after the stator's dimensions. The rotor's plans were also drawn in Adobe Illustrator. The rotor is where the magnets are attached with machine screws. Each magnet is attached to one spoke of the rotor, always in an alternating north-south pattern. The rotor rotates while operating the alternator, thus allowing alternating magnetic poles to pass each coil. The finished piece is one half inch thick, custom cut steel. Steel is essential for a rotor since the magnetic flux lines work best through this material. Attempting to use wood or plastic for the rotor is a waste of time and resources. Since there are 15 coils and the alternator is three phase, there are five coils associated with each phase. Each phase is wired in series, meaning the end of a coil is soldered to the start of another until all five coils are connected. This process is repeated until each of the three phases is wired. The result is three sets of connected coils, each with one starting wire and one ending wire. The starting wires are then soldered together, thereby connecting all three phases and leaving a total of three ending wires. This wiring technique is called series star. The rotor and stator are mounted on a hand-built housing consisting of dimensional lumber, one half inch diameter threaded rod, and a variety of shaft collars, lag bolts, nuts, washers, and sealed bearings. Attached to the threaded rod is a hand crank obtained online. The rotor and stator should be situated as closely together as possible, but without touching. Each of the three ending wires are split with a short length of magnet wire soldered about three inches from each end. Thus, the three ends become six. These six ends are attached to three bridge rectifiers. The three bridge rectifiers convert the alternating current into direct current. Each bridge rectifier has two wires leaving it from opposite corners. One corner is a positive terminal, while the other is a negative terminal. The three positive wires are soldered together to make a single positive terminal, and the three negative wires are soldered together to make a single negative terminal. The terminals yield about 12 to 16 volts of direct current with moderate turning of the hand crank. Faster turning yields higher voltage. The direct current provided by the axial flux alternator is used to charge batteries, illuminate light bulbs, run electric motors, and conduct electrolysis and general electricity experiments. 
Here are some sites I found especially useful during this project. 